Welcome to Melanated Conversations. Our narrative and our perspective. Here on the podcast, we are amplifying the voices of Black women and sharing their powerful stories of transformation. I'm Tarian. And I'm Yana. Let's start the show. Welcome back to another episode of Melanated Conversations. I'm your co-host, Tyrion. And I'm your co-host, Yana. Yes. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another week with us or another day, hour, whatever, how, however you decide to spend your time with us. Welcome back. We appreciate y'all. As y'all know, we have a special guest with us today, Miss Diane Plummer. She is the founder and CEO of Your True Shade Cosmetics, and we are so excited to have this conversation with her. Shout out to Sophia Lenore for once again being the yes. plug. Hey, <laughs> Sophia, thank you so much. We're so excited to have this conversation. So Welcome, Diane. Yes, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And of course, thanks again, Sophia. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. And Diane, we should have known. We were supposed to show up for Diane today. Like she she's in the whole beauty space and we just coming out here looking <laughs> broken busted. No, well, no, you girls look you girls. Listen, look my nice. excuses. Your skin is really glowing. My like excuses. I literally really just I just left the dermatologist, so <laughs> I had to come here with a naked face. Okay? Well at least you got you got the naked glow though. You got a glow. You got yeah, the naked yeah, glow. I you to you this morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's that good ring light. Never stop. Hello. <laughs> hey, we're gonna take advantage of it. No, um, thanks, Diane, for chatting with us today. We can't wait to get all into all the things that great things that you have going on. Before we do that, though, yeah, it wouldn't be melanated conversations if we didn't play a game. So are you open to play a little round of usually it's like one gotta go or would you rather depends on the question that we throw out. Um, right. Basically we'll throw out a scenario. If it's one gotta go out of the list of things that we provide, you have to choose one of the items that will have to go forever. And of course, if it's would you rather just either or type thing. So are you ready to play with this? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yes, I love somebody. She's ready. She's ready, Anna. She's ready. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, my first one I'm going to throw out is it is a would you rather. So okay, sure. I'm would scared. you rather go 30 days without your phone or your entire life without dessert? <laughs> um, I can I can go without the dessert, to be honest with you. I mean, I hardly have dessert, maybe like on the weekends or something. So, I mean, I can live without it. But my phone, I, I think I need my phone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I, so you asked the question, I was like, ooh, like I, I know what my answer is going to be. But also, I guess I should say, preface my answer before I answer by saying like, I'm not like one of those, things, those people who's like, I have to have my phone, but also... Like, that is how we communicate and stay connected exactly. to people nowadays. But and it's 30 I'm, days. It's not your entire life. It's 30 days without your phone. Without my phone? Entire, yeah, in your entire oh, life. Oh, okay. Dessert. Hold on. <laughs> but see, I'm really not a big dessert person either. Yeah. Like, I'll have it every once in a while, but I'm not like, I have to have dessert. Like, I can find other forms of getting the sugar. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so, oh, okay. But then, okay. 30 days without my phone. Girl, stuff be happening. I got stuff going on right now. I need my phone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go without dessert forever. I'll, I'll eat some fruit. Dang. <laughs> okay. What about you? Yes. And you know, I always get on to you, Terry, and about like, don't give us no food. Don't give me no food question. And you here. I just put my own... <laughs> I put my own self in the bin in the hot seat. Like you really did. Because I love me some chocolate. But wow. chocolate, but chocolate can be for the heart. So if it's if it's good for you, is it considered a dessert? I don't consider dessert, chocolate a dessert. Dessert is pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Dessert equals pleasure, but I think of cookies and pies and cakes. Cakes and pudding you know? and you yes. know, stuff like that. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Ice cream is a dessert, right? Yes. <laughs> but I like my cakes, my pies, and my but you can still have your chocolate. But entire life, though. Ooh. You can make a fruit plate. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Drizzle some chocolate on top exactly. of it. Exactly. Yep. So, 30 days without my phone. 
That's like February with a leap year plus a day. <laughs> oh my. Here you go. Here you go. All the technicalities. Because <laughs> she's go, going to be technical. Can I go leap year February plus a day without my phone? Mm. But I got other people around me that got a phone. Oh, mm. okay. Fair. And I see where this is going. And I have a computer and a tablet. Fair. And I can okay, still so communicate through. You use critical thinking. And you can mm-hmm. use apps now, like what's app and different things to still communicate. So go ahead. You know, I'm going to put my phone on hold, but I'm going to keep my dessert for life. <laughs> <laughs> fair. Fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah, good one. That's a good one. <laughs> okay. Let Solid. me see if I have one more to throw throw your way. Hold on. I guess this is a, this or that or... One got to go? Okay. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to give you a category. Okay. It's either a day in time or a oh, iconic musician. Give me oh, the... we have to pick? That's the category. But then based on your category, I'm going to choose one of the two questions. Oh. A day in time. I'm going to let Diane... Yeah, I'm going to let Diane pick. It's a day in time or iconic musician? Yes. Maybe a day in time. That sounds interesting. Okay. <laughs> Christmas or your birthday? Ooh. As in one has to go? Forever? <laughs> I'm sorry, but Christmas would have to go. I'm a birthday diva. <laughs> hey. No questions asked. April is even my birth month. So, you know. <laughs> oh, is it? Did your yeah, my birthday was April 7th. Oh, happy oh, belated. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> you were Aries, girl. Yes, I am. <laughs> I, I live with an Aries. Ooh, I love yeah. Aries. Y'all are some oh, that's cool. wonderful people. You live with Aries and Taurians. What? I do. I do. <laughs> I really do. Okay. Okay. So she said, you know, her birthday. Okay. Nope. Hands down. <laughs> okay. No, you know what? I, because I feel like I'm Mother Christmas and I love Christmas. Christmas is like my favorite holiday. I love Christmas. Oh my goodness. I love Christmas. But here's the thing. If one has to go forever, then that means I don't get to leave. I don't get to, ex- in my mind, I'm like, then am I even alive? You're right. thinking too deep. Exactly. So, well, Terry, you gave me this. You gave me yeah. So I'm thinking like you get to choose which one you celebrate. You can't oh. celebrate your birthday, but you can celebrate Christmas, vice versa. Um, listen, as long as I, if, if I can just wake up and see my birthday, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> But Christmas, <laughs> turn up. We turn up all kinds of all. But then, see, look at you. <laughs> no, I love Christmas. I love. How can you love Christmas, baby I, Jesus? Christmas. Yes. yes. No, I'm with you. Okay. With you. I was about to say, if if it was one of those things where it's like, then you don't experience your birthday like ever. Yeah. Then no. Yeah. When well, you gave me the question, so that's what I'm like. Unless that's what you were going with it. But anywho, I'm with you on Christmas. I think that's okay. a family thing for us because that that ties with Christmas is our thing. Yes. And like you said, as long as I see my birthday, I might even <laughs> celebrate my birthday on my birthday. But I mean, I'm a birthday girl, but I'm not like go all out for my birthday. Exactly. Just sometimes I time in my space. Um, yeah. Diane says she's like, no, I, I turn it. It's like it's like a family thing, my friends, family. So it would be almost like Christmas <laughs> if it's we, that we, you know, we, like get I'm together marking your birth- and, and everything. I'm well, marking your birthday down so that we can can we be able to the next invite. <laughs> next next year, April April seventh. Sure, sure. We'll be road tripping and doing all kinds of stuff. Hey, <laughs> we we're, we're here for a good time. And in Jamaica too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, had this been my husband though, that have been an interesting uh, answer because his I birthday is about on that. Christmas. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we gonna celebrate both on the same day. So right. exactly. <laughs> Right. Um, well, thank you, Diane, for playing with us. That was fun. That yeah, was fun. <laughs> <Nice icebreaker. laughs> yes. Well, without further ado, let's get into the this conversation, our melanated chat, because man, you are an amazing mm-hmm. human being. 
That's, I just want to say that first. But we're going to let you tell us about yourself, okay? <laughs> so my Thank first question you know. is, of course, just tell us a little bit about who Diane Plummer is. What are your roots? Where are you from? How would your family or friends maybe describe you? Can you just give us a little peek into your life? Sure, sure. So, of course, I am Jamaican. I was born in St. Catherine in Jamaica. Um, very humble beginnings, of course. You know, very strong mother figure in my life and grandma as well. And I have three brothers, two sisters. So it's a big, relatively big family. Who am I? I I think I have very strong values when it comes on to being able to do whatever I want, whatever I set my mind out to do, you know, because I, I believe that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And that is like a verse that, you know, grandma would always say, <laughs> or, you know, we would learn it that we went to Sunday school and so on. So that kind of stuck with me to know that, okay, I can do anything really as long as I put my mind to it and work, work through it. So I'm that kind of go getter kind of person, <laughs> to be honest with you. But I do love to have fun. I love going on road trips. I have a road trip coming up this weekend. <laughs> I am introverted, to be honest with you. But when it comes on to my job and my business, I do get out of my shell. And I'm not afraid of public speaking. So which is kind of weird, like, oh, you're introvert. But, you know, I can transform when, when the need, need arises, you know. What would my friends and family think? say about yeah yeah <laughs> they would definitely think say that okay I'm a little nerd <laughs> a bit but I also do love you know to dress up to go out you know things like that they would also say that maybe I'm a little bit on the brash side but I just think that I am a matter of fact kind of person so I just I don't want to beat around the bush so I would say things just like that. I'll just say it. And, but I do think that sometimes it does come across as maybe being offensive to some people. So I'm trying to kind of tone it down and like think about what other people may perceive what I'm saying. But I tend to just say, you know, what, not, not necessarily what comes to my mind, but I'm going to tell you like it is. I'm that yeah. kind of person. Yeah. You tell the truth. Yeah. No, I, I love that. <laughs> Yeah, you can definitely tell that you are very assertive. Even you command, like you mean you you capture people's presence just when you're speaking. Like I'm like, oh, I'm in. You can talk all day. I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, she knows what she's talking about. I don't know how she she knows. Just <laughs> your confidence. I love it. I think it's great. Go ahead, Yana. No, I was just I was just saying she, she's our people. Like and you were talking about like you like to travel be, road trips man if <laughs> one for this covid we'll be on the road so oh, well, we're getting better God. now yeah we <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> now you say you are one of six right are you yes. little oh wow i'm the fourth child so what oh, is that the fourth? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's an even number so yeah. maybe i don't You're know on the other side of the house uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> Cool. And the um, eldest of the other set because we have um, <laughs> the first three. They're a lot older than I am. So when I was growing up, they weren't there because they were whether they're like adults at the time. So at home, I was the eldest growing up. Oh, you sound like yeah. my husband's family. That's he's yeah. one of he's one of ten, and he's number five. Woo. And like everybody else, with the exception of one brother that's like a few years older than him, everyone else was pretty much adults by the time like. The other half of the kids were born, and they had they started already having their own kids. So right, he, he, he yeah. has, it's ten. It was ten. Listen, like he has nieces and nephews that are our age. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, <It's> crazy. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about your true shade. You know, like most great successful people, you started you treat your true shade out of a personal need while mm -hmm. studying sustainable energy, which is. In Sweden, which is I know, right? In itself. We're gonna talk about that too. No, Sweden and Finland. Let me correct myself. I'm gonna stay if I'm gonna state it, I'm gonna state it correctly. So can you share a little bit about that journey and studying abroad and how it led to the launch of your true shade? Sure. So back in I think it was back in twenty ten, 
you know, I, I tend to do these kind of plans for my life in blocks. Like, okay, what do I want to do in 2011? As so I was planning, like, okay, I, I want to go back to school and do a master's degree in, in 2011. So I applied for the Erasmus Mundus programs. <laughs> it's based in Europe. And you can get to study at top European universities. And if you're awarded a scholarship, it's even better for you. So I was actually awarded a scholarship to go and study in Sweden. I didn't know anything about Sweden. I remember myself Googling <laughs> what, are, what is Sweden like? What are Swedish people like? <laughs> what, where is the university? And, and all of that. So when I moved there, I realized that, okay, it took me probably about two weeks to see another black person based on where I was. So I was like, oh, <laughs> I mean, for me, I can blend in in terms of my personality. I, I don't feel less than or anything like that. But when it came on to my skincare and makeup, when my makeup bag was running out, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, where am I going to find stuff? <laughs> it got really frustrating. So I, you know, I said, you listen, I'm chemical engineer. That's what I studied in college. I should be able to make something for myself. So started doing my research. I remember purchasing like a little bit of this ingredients, X, X, Y, Z, and purchased a small food mixer <laughs> and other like tablespoons and, and so on those kitchen instruments or what do you call those utensils and I just started to make stuff in my room lots of trial lots of trial and error actually and that's how it was born that's how it was born and then you know of course I had another friend at school she was she's Swedish but she's black Swedish and of course I would give her stuff to try and that's how everything started so once I graduated and I moved back to Jamaica I got my business registered. I got my products tested, formulas, et cetera. And then I just started to make stuff here and package. And then once I realized after a couple months that, okay, this is something that I could really do, I applied for grants and I got the innovation grant in Jamaica. So it was like seed funding for your business. And I was able to purchase additional equipment and kind of get things off the ground. So once I did that, I started to, of course, or at least during that time, I was getting different stores to carry the products, started my website and things, you know, really started to pick up doing a bit more marketing to get a bit more exposure. And yeah, that's just the journey. Of course, I know you're probably going to ask what's happening since COVID. So I'll let me leave that question for you. Yeah, we are going to, we are going to touch on that, but so much you addressed there. And I just wanted to like commit, like to go from, cause this all happened. How old is your company now? We are six years in August. Six years in August. August will make six years. That's amazing. You. So you're in, you're doing your study abroad. And you notice that you, there's nothing out there that's, that works for you and your skin. And you literally, you don't wait. You go home, <laughs> utilize it. <laughs> and you're like, I'm about to make something. Like you literally went home yeah. Yeah. and planted yeah. the seed of your business. Not even just for, you solved the problem, not only just for you at that moment, but like for so many more of us that experience that, even if we're not in Sweden, we experience yes. that here, right in my little neighborhood. Oh, it's no. hard to find your true shade. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So just, I, I think that was a message within itself is that we so much time sometimes trying to make sure we validate it, research it, do all the things before we start and just even do the simple things like get a mixer. Yeah, I'm gonna need a mixer. Let me, right. let me use my <laughs> my knowledge, yeah, from, yeah, my engineering brain, and just get to work. Sometimes of getting course. to work and everything else, and you're six years later. Yeah, everything the path was just continuously like being guided for you as you got deeper into it. You, you know, you weren't thinking about like making this a whole like business, but. No. Not you are. You got seed money. You're everything. working. You're, I mean, just everything. Yeah, that's, things are I falling into place. Yes, definitely. You, you talk about need to just step out there sometimes. 
And yeah. this, if it's supposed to work, it will work. If it's not supposed to work, then it's just not going to work. Right. And there's still, but there's still a something. lesson in that, though, that sometimes yeah. that you need to learn. So just because it isn't, doesn't work doesn't mean that there wasn't a lesson that you weren't well, supposed to learn. Well, and, 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 all, and also the lesson of, you know, a lot of times we see a problem or, an you know, an issue and we want it to be solved, but we're waiting for somebody else to solve, to solve it for it. us. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the fact that you took initiative immediately was like, OK, clearly I'm not going to I'm like I'm not finding what I need. So uh-huh, aha, right. let me That's use the, the tools <laughs> that God has given me and you got to work immediately. That is so dope. And that's a lesson, you know, for myself or for, for everyone, everyone listening. Like, you know, if, if there's a problem and you and there's any even an inkling of maybe a solution, we should all try to find within us to to, to at least attempt to right. solve the 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 problem. So that is super cool. That's that's yeah. man, that's I didn't want to I didn't want to I'm sorry, I didn't want to like I just didn't want us to move too fast, man. No, like yeah, seriously. Yeah, and also too, I'll say. Then we can go to your question, too. Yeah, is that in the beauty industry we hold a purse power? Yes. We so do. we need. We should be represented. That's in right. That space. Yes. That's right. So I can mean you on so many levels, and Absolutely. I'm so glad that things <laughs> are moving for you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm no, this for sixty plus six, sixty times sixty more years. Yes. Oh, man, <laughs> man, oh, man. <laughs> All right, Terry. Go on. Throw your question. <laughs> My question is just that: what what sets tr- your true shade apart from other cosmetic lines? Okay. So what is different about your true shade is that we tend to use mostly natural ingredients in our products. So, for example, with our face powders and our foundations, these are mineral makeup. So mineral is the most natural form of makeup that there is. In our skincare, we do the same thing. So we would use like in our soaps, bamboo charcoal. We use castor oil, the Jamaican black castor oil as well, coconut oil. So we tend to stick to these natural ingredients. We don't add any extra fragrances to our facial products because most times it's these extra fragrances that cause the irritation. Yeah. And, you know, I have eczema and I know the struggle. So I, I want something that I can feel very comfortable to wear so that I don't have any irritation so that no one else would have any skin irritation. So we tend to use more natural ingredients. So that is what se- sets us apart. Yeah. Thank you I love that. that too. I love that too, especially even more so we actually had a conversation this past season mm-hmm. yeah. on this topic of clean beauty and being more aware of the products that you are in taking or putting on your skin. Exactly. Your, 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 people yes. don't realize your skin is a whole organ. It's the largest yep. organ. Yep. And sometimes we neglect, we don't think of it in the same space as we think of our other yeah. bodily organs so but being so con- being more conscious of these ingredients that are in our products that are causing so many different things ailments yeah. in our bodies that we don't yes. recognize so exactly no, a I- lot of them they they disrupt our entire endocrine system yeah. so we have to be very careful with the types of lotions that we use the types of the oils, skin, I don't know. Sometimes persons use, like in Jamaica, we have an, an issue with skin bleaching. So you mm. find that persons use, maybe not everyone, but a lot of people actually try to you know lighten their skin complexion. So you have to be careful of all these things that you're putting on your skin because now, yeah, you're going to be you know nice and glowing, et cetera. But what happens a couple of years down the line when you find that, oh, you have some kind of illness, which yeah. was related to your products that you were using. Yeah. And rightly so, as she said, you know, the skin is the largest organ. It's our barrier that is protecting us. Yeah. Right. So if, we, if we don't take care of it, then we allow, you know, the space for other things to come across that, that barrier. Yeah. That's right. No, that is that is absolutely right. Well, I mean, I can't thank you enough for, you know, not just thinking from from the standpoint of how can be successful and how can I make a dollar, but really, truly considering 
how how your product can affect the people who are using it in a positive in a positive way. I think that is super cool, and the thought and the intentionality that went into the process for you is is amazing. I love it. I love it. There was something else I was going to ask you, and I'm <laughs> drawing a blank. It'll come back. Is it on TV? Oh, I know. Oh, I know. I was going to ask. I was going to ask you what all um, products are in your co- in uh, your true the your true shade line besides just like makeup. You also do you have you have soaps and facial cleansers. Yes. Okay. okay. So let me just give you a quick run through of the products that are in the line. Yes. So we have makeup, and of okay. course that makeup it looks at the foundations, face powders, highlighters supporting products such as your primers. I'm going to be introducing some new products such as a finishing spray as well. Then now moving into the, oh, I forgot lipsticks. (laughs) We have lipsticks as well and lip glosses. And so there's matte and of course there's a gloss. For the skincare, we have cleansers, facial cleansers like our Rapid Radiance cleanser is a glycolic cleanser. We have moisturizers, you know, like our hydrating moisturizers. And again, these are natural, mostly natural ingredients. Cleansers, toners, we're going to be reintroducing our toner as well. And then for the hair, because of course I'm Jamaican. (laughs) So we have the Jamaican black castor oil as well. So what I've done throughout the years is to basically narrow the line because I didn't want to be having so many products. When I just started, I wanted to do everything. I wanted to do soaps. I wanted to do makeup. I wanted to do hair care. I wanted to do all these things. But, you know, having a more focused approach, I can pick out what my best sellers are. And then I just want to focus on making those even better and having the supporting products for those items as well. So I've pretty much narrowed the line to about 10 products, which includes your makeup, skincare, and just one hair care, which is the Jamaican black castor oil. Listen, Diane's got you covered. She got you, she got your face and your head covered. She got you covered. <laughs> okay. You literally head to toe. Head to toe. She got you covered. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. Thank so, you. So how has True Shade, we talked about it, well, we kind of touched on it just a bit, but how was it impacted? And also what kind of adjustments did you have to maybe implement in your company to stay afloat? Definitely a good question. (laughs) So of course, the pandemic has affected lots of businesses globally. During this time, it also affected my business in in a negative way when it just started. So when COVID hit, I found that all the stores that sold my products in Jamaica, they stopped immediately. Like, okay, we won't be reordering. So now I'm thinking, oh my God, I have to pivot. I have to figure out how I'm going to stay afloat. Even if I'm not getting as much sales as I was before, you know, I was like, oh, I don't want to close down. But if, if, if it needs to, then I, I will. But I, I'm, I'm going to fight. So what I did was to... Look at the export market. So I started to revamp my e-commerce website, started to do more strategies along that line for e-commerce. And what I realized was that I was getting a lot of sales of my products from the US, from the States. So I decided to basically focus on that market because even though I was doing the marketing here for Jamaica, it wasn't picking up, especially during COVID because now the store, the persons would purchase my products directly from other retailers that are here. So if those stores have stopped supplying the products, then of course, persons are going to look for alternatives. So I decided to, you know what? I'm going to focus on where my products is actually wanted, if you would want to put it that. So I, you know, sometimes you just have, you just have to follow the money. Where's the money coming from? The money is coming from export. So, okay, I have to focus on my export market. Now, because of that, I had to change my business 
entirely, just changed my entire business model to focus on that market. Because if you didn't realize, I was making the products here. I was making all my products. So I found myself with a lot of inventory, COVID, what am I going to do at this time? So I had to like link with stores in the States, whether online or otherwise, that I could just send, get my products also because, you know, these are cosmetics. I don't want them to sit on me here. So I had to, you know, make new business relationships, send my products over there. And they did so well, like they got sold. And, you know, just to continue with those relationships. Now, I had to look at myself, look at my company and say, okay, if I am making the products here, then I have to import some of my ingredients. What if I get a company who can make my products in the market that they're going to be sold? So that is, you know, something that I am currently looking at because sometimes you have to pivot your business in a way that works with the times that you're in and to just work along with those kind of strategies, not necessarily just for that moment, but during that time, you may realize that, wow, this is like an even better model for my business than how it was currently. So for me, COVID from a local perspective in Jamaica, it was bad, literally really bad. But when I look at it from an export perspective, it was a good situation. So <laughs> yeah. I didn't even think about too that thinking about it from an international standpoint, like you're in Jamaica too. So not even just from local in Jamaica, but external, like outside of Jamaica. So I was, yeah, but I'm glad it did work for you. You found a way to navigate through. And of course, I mean, black women. <laughs> that's it black women <laughs> and that's sad now I was I, I, you, you said the, the last thing you said I was sitting there thinking I was like I wonder if she like if there was anything that like kind of stuck even you know what I mean like even though the circumstances weren't ideal but you know, you know, good things come out of you know, good things come out of bad situations. Yeah, they as do. Well, yeah. and so the fact that you know you were able to recognize that, hey, like there could be some things that I've implemented that will stay regardless of what's going on with COVID, and then right. continue exactly. to implement into your 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 business. So I that's and it helps you to re you know at that time really like reimagine like your brand far as like products and scaling down and how you want to do it really did yeah it really did because it was during that time when you know you have so much time on your hands that you're like okay what can i remove from the line what can i add to support the existing product so it's like Mm -hmm. a pruning stage Mm -hmm. where you're just removing things so that you know the business can flourish yeah so that's how i was trying to look Look at the whole situation. Man, you are always thinking ahead. Always thinking ahead. <laughs> always. It's the engineer, it's the engineering mindset. We we love of continuity. Course. We like to. That's the steam but, learning. I, I, which we need to go like I, yep, I was we were just about to go into that. Let's talk about <laughs> STEM. For those of you who are listening, who I feel like everybody should know what STEM is, but I'm not going to make the assumption that everyone knows. It's what STEAM those, now. It's steam. Steam. Oh, it's STEAM. What's the mm-hmm. A? Is it art? You know, is it? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's steam. Using science, technology, arts, and engineering and math. Yeah. Math. yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Yana just broke it down for us. <laughs> Thank you, Yana. Steam has become a critical and vital component. Component, excuse me. Just a, the, just globally in in almost any in- industry, you hear that. But I don't want to call it a buzzword, but that acronym being thrown around all the time. Even our kids now, they, they're building schools around STEAM and you knowing, you know, that are just ha- the direction of how new life in general, technology is, you know, constantly Gosh. changing. And we are every, whether you want to be a part of technology or not, you don't have a choice but to, to adjust and adapt. And so I, I, I want, I would like for you to talk to us a little bit about the importance of women in STEM and STEAM. And what has your experience been like? You're a scientist. Like you, you are smart. You are smart. You are a scientist. (laughs) And we don't see or hear or talk about that enough seeing black women in that space. So what, 
What has your experience been like being in STEM and a part of STEM? And then before you answer that, well, no, no, go ahead. Answer that. I'm not going to. Am I going to jump ahead? So your I'm question sorry. is, what is my experience in as a woman in STEM, as a STEM yes. professional? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and okay. what kind? What kind? What got you? You know, into that space? Had you always been interested in science? Well, and I, I was always interested in science as a child. I remember my mother actually got me a toy chemistry set once for my Christmas present. <laughs> so yeah, I think that kind of started the whole love for it and me always wanting to mix up different kinds of chemicals to see what would happen, you know, as a kid, <laughs> which was probably, you know, in hindsight, very dangerous. <laughs> but, you know, when I'm when I went to high school, I naturally, you know, went for the sciences. When I went to the University of Technology in Jamaica to study chemical engineering, I I realized that, you know, when you look around, there's not a lot of women, in the, a lot of girls in the class. And just in the whole engineering faculty, actually, there were very few women. I think studies actually show that between 18 and maybe 22 percent of women actually in these faculties are studying chemical um, engineering on a whole and when it comes on to when these women graduate I think it's about what 24 percent of them actually end up working in these STEM careers so there is still a gap not only in the aspects of studying these prof- for these professional jobs but also when it comes on to working You know, you may graduate with an engineering degree, but then you find that they're not working as an engineer or in the engineering field as well. So I think, you know, as a STEM professional, I can see a few ways in which this can be improved to get more young girls involved in in doing STEM. And it all starts with looking at the role models, having, you know, when they have these career fairs, you know, bring along. A, 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 an engineer, a, a female engineer to show that, hey, female engineers exist. And not only that, show that these women are able to have a normal life, a quality of life. Because most times when persons think about engineering, you're thinking like, oh, I'm going to be working so many hours. I won't have any time for my life. I won't be able to have a family and, you know, just have a quality of life. So have these kinds of role models to show girls that, hey, this is a a woman who is an engineer. She has her career. She also, you know, has her family. She's able to do these fun things. And just to show that, hey, it's not like something that should be fair or, you know, something that is really hard. Also, you know, when we're, when they're doing marketing for these programs, you find that they're doing just a generic marketing sometimes. So, you know, tailor it towards, you know, girls, tailor it towards girls too, not just, just a general kind of marketing to get persons involved in, in, in STEM. And honestly, the ratio still has not changed that much when it comes on to women in, in, in STEM because I'm, I'm right now I'm going for my certificate in energy management and in my class currently is about 26 persons and only four of those 26 are actually women who are studying to get this, this upgraded certification. So I'm like, still, it's still there. It's still there. And I, I just think that, you know, once we kind of shift the whole marketing aspect of it, and let, you know, girls not be afraid of, of certain programs, math. Math is fun. We use it every single day. We use it when we're counting our money, when we use it when we're, you know, doing our makeup to figure out, okay, how many times do I need to apply my <laughs> eyeliner? You know, things like that. So just to make it like, hey, math is all around us. It's fun. And because once we, we kind of structure it along that way, you'll find that, more girls, more women would want to get into to engineering or STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. I think she said STEAM now with the AIDS art. <laughs> yes, yes. So because so, so now they're including art into that because you know with some 
you know, art is a lot of sometimes it's a lot of critical thinking and so it plays on t- uh, some of those same type of skills that relate to STEM well, te- technology. Um, yes. And yeah. technology too. So now they've included arts into that as well. There's so much that you touched on that I wanted to Again, I always got to touch on something that you because this taps on to a lot. My in my former life, I was in HR as well. I I served as a recruiter. I was also I did more college recruiting. I worked for universities. I was actually I worked in career service. I worked on both sides of that. And it was always my common thing is that sometimes the, the real key issue is the lack of exposure. I feel I don't really think it's lack of interest. It's lack of exposure. And one thing I continuously pounded on like administrators or my VPs is when it came to diversity, especially in you because you want quote unquote, they want to see more diverse the in these type of roles. I was like, well, you have to present it in that way. So for me, it was just more so. Let's have preview day, career previews, go to the universities, even not even, even, I mean, high school and college. At college, it's, you still find so many that are, because I was one of those, that was kind of like not just really sure of my path and what I wanted to do. And I always made it a requirement for companies that came on campus. This is when I was in the on the university side. So on the university, I always made it a requirement to have at least one or two diverse individuals in the end, one of those has to definitely be a woman to really, and they are, they need to be the ones that are shining and speaking and giving their day in life because that is an area that is so underrepresented. And that's the, that's how you're going to pull more is because they want to see themselves reflected and they want to know that they can easily talk to and really get the experience from someone that is similar in their walk. So I was like, it's not science. I mean, it is science that we're talking about, but this situation is not science. And I was like, you, you just have to show a little bit more effort and really driving the line of, of, of really true diversity. So that was something that was always key for me is that I wanted there to be more opportunities for exposure because mm-hmm. that is such a if we can tap, if you don't know if you don't know you don't something know the possibility know. yeah exactly then it's, it's the same it's the same here in Jamaica because growing up in high school I didn't know of chemical engineers I didn't know that what they did you know it was when I actually started to study another program and then I heard that there is something called chemical engineering. And I was like, oh, let me let me check this out. So I actually was studying for something else. Mm. And then I found out about chemical engineering. And I said, oh, wow, this sounds like something that I would want to do. So it's true. If, if we don't know, then we won't want to do something. So as she said, you know, having this exposure is, is really, really important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you got to start as early. You can't wait when it's, you can't wait for the time at the job market stage to now try to provide exposure. If you really want, you start partnering with all the way from the grade school level. (laughs) I was like, are you mentoring? I have a child that is heavy into science. Heavy. She's, she's heavy into it. (laughs) You want to take some calls? Oh, you're asking. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't Diane, you want to take some calls from a 10 year old? You want to mention I have, oh, look, I got a 14 year old that's really heavy into it as well. Yeah, yes. no problem. Yeah, you know, them firstborns. Them firstborns. Them firstborns. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, no problem. Yes. So let's talk, okay, let's <laughs> bring up, make some arrangements. Yes. No, no, that's so good. So in addition to, of course, you running this global cosmetic line, your beauty line is beyond cosmetic yes. at this point. You also, I mean, you you just said you're working on another, you said an in, energy certificate or? Yeah, it's a certified energy manager. So it's a CEM. So it looks at like just doing like audits for buildings to see how they can save their energy and recommending different resources for them to improve on their current operations in a building, in a company, in a factory, things like that. Smart. 
<laughs> black women. But but in addition to those, all of those things you have going on, you also you give back. You lecture in chemical engineering at the university at the like very university that you went that you graduated from. Yes. yes how do you yes. how do you balance it all? And tell us a little about that too. Okay, so I currently lecture some chemical engineering courses at the University of Technology in Jamaica. And the courses that I lecture include like thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, introduction to engineering, and this other one called remediation technology that looks at how to treat areas that would be would have been damaged by waste, like how to recover these areas, things like that. It's it's fun. It's fun to lecture these young minds. Of course, there's one aspect that I really haven't gotten used to, and that's marking papers. I don't think any lecturer actually gets used to it. (laughs) But of course, things are online now. We're doing like online teaching. So, you know, it's marked by our Moodle system, but I still have to go through and make sure that, okay, it didn't mark this one incorrectly and and so on. So it's it's gotten a lot better since the pandemic, the whole marking of papers. (laughs) But yeah, and what I try to do is to let them understand how it really works in industry because I, I had worked in industry before working as a lecturer and I know the challenges that I had when I was matriculating from student life to being a, an employee of a, you know, engineering company. So I try to kind of help them in that way. Of course, you know, my approach sometimes is almost like a little tough love (laughs) kind of vibe, but you know, it's to help them to understand in industry, this is how it's, it's going to be. It's not going to be like sugar coating. So, you know, like if I give a project, I expect them to go and do some research before you come to me and ask me, you know, exactly how should I do this point by point, come to me and say, okay, this is what I researched. I tried something, but I'm stuck here. How can I move forward? I prefer that kind of approach rather than, you know, not doing something and then coming back. So I try to tell them that, hey, when you're at work and you get like a big project to do, you're expected to do something before you go to your boss. You know, you can't just go with a blank slate. So I try to incorporate what I've learned in industry and academic part to kind of help them to matriculate into, you know, a working working environment. Another thing that I did, and it was also based on my experience as a student, is I I started along with another colleague, what we call our employability workshop. So we wanted to look at our engineering students, how to write a technical resume. So I would bring in persons from the industry who work in HR, who, who interview engineers, you know, how what are the key elements they need to have in their CVs or in their resumes. What I also did was to, in that same workshop, have actual senior management who actually interview engineers come and do a presentation to the students. So we had a really nice workshop. So what I tried to do, as I said before, is to just incorporate the academic side with the professional lifestyle. So I'm trying to merge both of them so that they can have a better matriculation process when they start working. Because I I was thrown into it. So I don't want that experience for these new sort of students, you know, who are who are coming up. You you truly set students up for success. Yes. From the beginning trying. to the end. <laughs> I'm trying. I mean, oh, they are, and I think they appreciate it like after they graduate. I mean, now they're course. thinking, oh, so tough, yeah. you know, but then I've gotten the calls like, oh, Miss, you know, I need, you know, a recommendation. And, you know, I've gotten the thanks after. But during right. the program, I'm not going to get the, the thank you <laughs> because yeah. they're thinking that you're so hard on them. But they, but right. they, they appreciate what, yeah. what you're doing. But yeah. it's individuals like you that really leave an impact on students and, you know, individuals who are moving into that professional space, because a lot, you don't see very many educators who care enough to be like, okay, 
Now, this is going to take some work, but this is how we're. I'm going to make sure that you're ready and successful and prepared to move into your professional career instead of just being like, all right, you took my class. Now, Bye. figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I'm like, good grief. It's like, she cares. She really cares. And not just... Oh, I care and da-da. but like no, but also you're gonna put in the work. We're gonna you're gonna figure this out. But I'm gonna give you the tools to be able to do that. Exactly. Um, but it's it's a whole picture, it's a whole process. I love that. I love it. Kudos to you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Once again, as Yana stated uh a couple of times during black this women. black women. <laughs> black women. I was waiting for black. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud to be a black woman. Of course, every day, all day, <laughs> all day, every day. Yes, ma'am. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay. I guess we're getting ready to to wrap. I know. Wrap I was looking at the up. time. I was like, the time flew. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. It yes. absolutely does. Okay. So before we officially close, just a couple of qu- closing questions for yeah, you. Yeah, no worries. So we always ask our guests, they have a power word or pow- a word that is kind of, you know, pushing them through a year. So for you, is there a power word? Do you have a power word for 2021? Wow. A power word for 2021. Just yes, one or, word. Or phrase or a couple of words. <laughs> I mean, it's your world. We just living in. <laughs> you know, throughout this whole pandemic, I, I've... I've realized that I just have to be true to my existence, you know, in whatever I'm doing. I just have to make sure that I'm living my truth. And I know it sounds cliche because everybody's talking about live your truth, but it really resonates with me this year. So I'm being true to myself in the fact that I I love engineering. I want to go deeper in engineering. So I'm going to do more courses to get my certifications up so I can work on these really good projects that are out there. You know, I'm being true to myself, you know, speaking, my my voice is very important to me. So I don't want to be in situations, whether personal or professional, where I feel like I have to be walking on eggshells. I want to be feel liberated in my truth and just to speak my truth and to live live my truth and not to You know, not to be taken aback by what's happening around me. It's kind of hard. Of course, there are hard days when I I really don't feel like doing anything because we're on lockdown. We kind of go, you know, to the places that we want. We can't see everybody that we would like to see. But just to, you know, just to be able to live my truth in these times, you know, being able to just kind of pivot life right now. That's all we can do. We just have to learn how to to pivot life. And I look at this whole pandemic time as a time for pruning, looking at what is really important to sustain life. Just like when you're pruning a plant, you know, life is life is just too short. And this whole pandemic is making me realize that, hey, it's even more so now that I need to, to live live this truth yes. this really I, for my existence yeah I love that and I love the way that you even identified it as pruning because for those and I'm not a green thumber by any means I just started you know over the pandemic started trying to like it's turning <laughs> it was brown but now it's turning it's just it's, it's had a little hint of green on it I got green spots now <laughs> on my thumb but when she when you think about what pruning does So pruning is the process of removing away or or taking off the dead parts or or dying parts of the plant so that the energy can now flow more to the part of the plant to give it more life and energy. Just thinking about it in that way and you put it in that and when you think about it and you think about 2020, it's like. (laughs) Having to prune, you had a lot of us had to really sit through some things. There were a lot of loss. We had to like get rid of some dead things, friends, co-workers, jobs, projects, yes, thoughts. I had to. So that the true energy can flow in the places where it's supposed to go so that we can grow to our true potential. Absolutely. And and pruning is not always, 
you know, you don't want to have to cut at your plant you've been caring no. for it. Sometimes that's not a, a wonderful or easy process. Sometimes that's painful, you know? So yes, to both of y'all, pruning is a the perfect is a perfect analogy for mm-hmm. yeah, uh, to. for I mean, that. But it has to be to. done. Yeah, even how I had to like pivot my business during the pandemic for me, that was that was a painful process. Yeah, but the imagine if you had it was hard. <laughs> it was really hard, and you know when I looked and I saw all my inventory, and I was like, oh my god, what am I gonna do now? But <laughs> now I can say that all that inventory is gone. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Because I had to, you know, like, oh, okay, I have to make the energy flow somewhere else then, you know? So That part. I- I'm happy. That part I right love there. that. Mm-hmm. Need I also love the fact I need you to get a shirt that somebody prune it. I don't know. I'm always trying to make all of our get like everything a shirt. A shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Why a shirt. not? Put on a shirt. <laughs> no, love that. What were you about to say, Terry? I was just I was about to say something corny. She kept she kept saying you kept saying you know the, living your truth or being true to yourself, and I was like, and that's also the the name of that's part of your. That's your brand, your true shade, oh, like wow. true. Like, oh, I didn't even realize that. <laughs> <laughs> it's you like, know, I so keep it 100 all, all wraps around. It's all telling the same story. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Come yeah. on. Yeah. We will have links to how you can sow a seed in yes. Diane later. I mean, at the end of the show. So, yeah, we're going to pass the collection plate around because this is a word service. Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen, sister. Amen. <laughs> Um, are there any other words or any new projects? I know you have your, you're still working on your energy management certificate. I hope I said that right. That's Certification right. soon right now. But is there anything else that you have going on, even with your true shade or anything? Yeah. Yes. So coming up within the next, I think, two months, I'm going to be revamping my foundations. So that's going to be something that is new. Another thing that's new right now, well, it's not so much new, but there is a, my best selling lipstick is the one I'm wearing now. It's called Love Letter. So I'm doing like a, a new test sale on it. So persons can purchase. I, I'm doing like a test, you know, to see how many persons actually purchase this new, new product directly from my website. So there's that. The other project that is coming up it, it stems from me doing the energy management certification because the way that I have pivoted my business now, it gives me a lot of time. It gives me a lot of time to focus on other projects, being a consultant in, in energy. So by me doing this energy certification, it opens me up now to get con- to be a consultant on energy related projects that may arise. So I'm really happy about that because I really want to make an impact in this area because in Jamaica, we don't have very good energy security. We purchase oil from other countries and then we process it here. So if I can help to contribute to in some way or form to kind of help alleviate that issue that we are having, then I, I, I feel you know, it would be a very fulfilling and rewarding experience for me. So, so those are my projects so <laughs> that are coming up. Nice. You are amazing. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, like for real. Black women are amazing. Man, <laughs> we <me>. are, aren't we? <laughs> Standing over here. Okay. Uh-huh. Last and final question. <laughs> How can our listeners connect with you? Do you have any social media handles or your website yes. that you can share? Okay. Sure. So my website is yourtrueshade.com. And to follow us on Instagram, it's at Your True Shade. Same on Twitter, at Your True Shade on all platforms. For my energy related <laughs> stuff, it's, it's Energy Manager 101 on Instagram. Right. Got it. And we will and make sure that all of that is linked in the show notes. And if y'all uh, want to sign up for a course, she's available there too. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, thank you so much, Diane, for taking the time to chat with us. This has been this has been wonderful. Thank yes. you. Yes, you're welcome. It's been a pleasure talking to you, ladies. It was really, really good. Felt very comfortable. I, I enjoyed it. 
Yes. <laughs> well, we want to keep this going. So Absolutely. We hope you make you feel comfortable so that we can come because we want to come to Jamaica. You ain't got to come back. You ain't even got to worry about coming here. We're trying to come to you. No, it's not worth coming here right now. It's just it's not even. Oh, <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. This has been refreshing. This has been yes, a refreshing conversation. So and thank for you. For me so too. Much. For me too. Oh, so it's sweet. Fun. <laughs> well, you guys, oh, again, plug into all the great things that Diane has going on. Share this with your with your young ones. There are there are many of us out here that are represented in so many great spaces. And yes. Diane is just one example of that. So, yes, we, we thank you guys for always continuously supporting us as we continue to amplify the beautiful voices of our Black women and all the great things that they have going on. But, you know, until next time, melanate on that. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed our chat today. Keep the conversation going by heading to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leaving us a review. Have a story of your own to share? Email us at info at melanatedconversations.com or connect with us on social media at Melanated Conversations. Till next time, keep raising your voice. voice.